Hey guys, so today's adventure, we're gonna just triple check that all of the power and grounds and five volts that I need are actually supplied up this end of the loom, just to make sure that I'm not missing anything or I'm not gonna leave myself short when we start putting this in the engine bay. So I just wanna make sure this is all properly assigned. Uh, once I've done that, we're gonna drill a big hole and hope that it is in the right spot. I'm just going to quickly go through this loom and just make sure I've mentally checked off that I've got a power and the ground and the 5 volt clearly earmarked for every sensor wire that I've got. Um, it just helps me sleep better at night when I know that I've got this all planned out better. And when you're sleeping in a car, every minute of sleep that you can get definitely counts. So. For this one, for example, I can see that this is my fuel pressure input. So I'm just gonna make sure I've got at least a five volt and a signal ground. Um, when we actually look at the, the fuel sensor uh, plug and the wiring, it'll say that we actually need at least a five volt power and the ground and the signal. So these make up the three pins on the fuel pressure sensor. In that same area of the car, I'm also running a flex fuel sensor. So I've got my signal wire here, and I've got a ground for this one as well. Um, but this flex sensor actually uses a switched 12 volt from the ECU. So if it used a five volt, I could probably just share this five volt wire, but I've actually got to run a separate 12 volt. So that's why I've planned and got that done. There'd be nothing worse than getting to that part in the car and going, oh, now I need a 12 volt wire and then having to run it all the way back through. So planning is key. So we're in the cockpit. Um, we're in the, uh, in the passenger seat and we're gonna try and find a nice place to drill um, a hole for the loom to go through. Um, got my trusty torch, so we're gonna try and light up the area and uh, just get all this stuff out of here. So I'll go get a box and get rid of all this stuff. We'll pull the carpet back because um, the owner has told me that he wants to replace it anyway. Um, so we're just going to pull it all back as much as we can, as much as we can, so that we can get up to the tunnel. We're going to try and put it through the tunnel. It's kind of out of the way inside the car and also outside. It's also going to be um, not presented and hidden pretty nicely. So we're just going to try and find a nice place for that to go. Um, I might use a little test hole and see if it's going to clear the transmission itself in this particular application. Um, there is a lot of room um, under the tunnel because the tunnel is gigantic, but the gearbox is actually kind of small. So um, that's where we're going to try and aim for this hole to go. Um, so let's give it a go. We've uh, pulled all the carpet out. Um, I've found what I think is a pretty good spot, um, sort of up here on the firewall. So what we're probably gonna do is do a little test hole, really, really quick with a very, very small drill bit. And I just wanna see if we're gonna have enough clearance around where that's gonna be. Uh, there's no point in just drilling a giant hole because you can't just put that metal back in very easily. So. Uh, going to measure, double check it, measure it again, double check it, and then uh, we'll see if we can make it work. So this is my little spot under here. Um, so I'm thinking somewhere around here, um, I'll get a marker and just triple check that. But where we're gonna, why I want to do that is that the loom can then run sort of along here somewhere, or it might run up uh, maybe maybe this way, but most likely it's going to go across the back here and up and then um, maybe mount these, you'll be mounted somewhere in this sort of area. But the owner has expressed that it might go up in the glove box as well. So um, as long as I can get it in this sort of general area, um, we may even mount it on this um, floor panel and then make a fake or, or a, uh, another floor over the top of that. Um, that's another common way that it is done as well. Um, 
not a lot of room in this because of this giant heater and air conditioning box. So this has probably got to stay in this car. So we just got to work around it. So I'm going to measure up really quickly and just make sure that where we're going to drill our little test hole is going to work for us on the other side because when we go out and have a look on the other side, that hole is sort of going to come out in, down, around there somewhere. So we're just going to make sure that that hole where we think it's going to come out is actually going to come out here in exactly the right place. Mm. So we are going to get a slight issue there because I can't obviously get my drill in there with this tiny little drill bit. So obviously having a whole hole saw is not going to be uh, an easy job either so I may need to revise where that hole actually goes um, simply because of packaging so um, may just have to try and go a little bit lower um, a tiny little test hole we'll just see how that goes now I'll go out in the engine bay um, I don't know if you can see it on the GoPro there's a tiny 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 little light coming through from all the um, lights inside the car that's where it is going to have to come through I don't have any other room to do it so we're going to get the whole saw out and put that on the drill and we're going to commit and get it done let's change this one over on the mighty Makita and we will make a hole. Um, having a test hole gives us a nice position for this to just go into so it doesn't wander around too much. Ow. This doesn't wander all over the place when we're trying to do it. Ends up a little bit messy otherwise. So uh, let's give it a go. Just going to do a really quick trial test just to run these wires through and uh, see how it's all going to fit. Cross your fingers. Now I could have taken out the entire dash of this car to get a better position to drill this hole, but nobody actually wants to do that. You, we all know that a car is never the same. As soon as you pull out those dash, there'll be a squeak, there'll be a rattle, and you'll never be able to find it again. It's just not worth it sometimes. So I've separated the loom. So we've got our inside component. So this will do the accelerator pedal, our ignition switch, and all the other stuff inside. I've got my other component of the loom, which is gonna do the flex fuel sensor and the fuel pressure sensor, which is over this side of the car. And I've got the stuff that's going outside and our grommet has been moved up to where it's probably gonna mount in this hole. So as you can see, that's a really quick test fit just to make sure that this grommet's going to be in place. Uh, the loom is moving freely in and out of this loom to get some uh, positioning. Um, sometimes I just like to squirt a little bit of tire shine or um, actual silicon spray, which is pretty much the same thing, um, just in and around this area to get some good pen. Um, it just makes the loom slide in and out a bit nicer. Spray that up a little bit and then see how much easier the loom goes in and out now. So much better. So now that I've run the loom through, what I'm just going to do very, very quickly is just throw a cable tie and tape really, really quickly just around the inside of that, um, that grommet just so that the loom doesn't slide backwards and forwards anymore. 
um, once we start cutting things to length, I don't want them moving backwards and forwards and then changing on me so that the coils are set at one length, but then the injectors are at another length when we they'll cut, when the loom slides backwards and forwards. So we're just gonna try and make that as secure as possible for now. And we'll start measuring and cutting things to length. I've got the loom fed through the hole in the firewall tunnel. Um, we're gonna pull that back up through and then separate everything as we need to. So we're gonna separate the ignition coils, the injectors. Um, I've got the thermo fans running through here as well. So we'll sneak them down through the engine some way. Um, the alternator is relocated on this particular application. Um, so we're gonna feed all of that um, cabling through and, and split it up where we need to. Right, so I've run and allocated all of my wiring to its various places around the engine bay. Uh, I've got the ignition coils. Gonna be a little bit tricky in this car just to measure them up and get them absolutely right with the positioning just cause of where they are. Um, but we may just measure them and see if we can make a rough uh, dimensions and make the rough plugs go in about the right sort of place. We might do that on the bench uh, just with a tape measure or a ruler. Um, I've got my injectors split across the banks, uh, coils like I spoke about, I've got my coolant temp which has actually been relocated to the back uh, just to get the coolant temp away from all the heat that's happening up here. Uh, so that's been relocated, probably another great reason why we haven't used a pre-terminated LS loom in this application just because the stuff is all over the place and it's all in different uh, geometry as to what the factory loom is set out to be. So we are going to start cutting. I've got my injectors which are gonna be cut down to length. Um, once I've got them in their right sort of lengths, I'll be able to then take this back out and then neaten it all and add in all my extra power wise for my injectors. I'll do all that on the bench because my old man back is not gonna cope very well for much longer reaching over this gigantic engine bay. So I've just done a really quick measure and cut and left a little bit of extra length on there just so we can get the plug on and make it loop nicely. Um, this gives us the chance to move this injector around this 120 degrees or so, just in case we ever need to clock it around. We've got that little bit of extra length that can move with that injector. Um, I went through the wiring diagram and allocated each of those uh, colored wires that are assigned for each injector and just made sure that they're gonna be perfect and the right length. So now what I can do is I can run a switch to 12 volt, which is our injector power switch, because these are all ground switching from the ECU. So the other side must be the injector power. Um, I haven't run it with this one, but I'm gonna cut it short. I'm gonna cut it down here. And I'm actually gonna splice all of those wires together and then run the powers up to here. But what I'm actually gonna do to make this job a little bit easier on the bench, I'm actually gonna tape and run the injector power with each one of these and run it back down so that it'll make it easy just to cut them all at the right length and uh, there'll be less work on the table. So I've got the majority of my loom cut in the right lengths and separated into the right sections. Uh, I've got a few more to do just sort of down near the starter motor, which is my battery positive uh, for all my fuse box and my relays. Um, I'm not gonna do the coils at this stage. I'm just gonna get some of this wiring sheathed and braided up the top which will make it look a little bit less busy so that we can understand what we're gonna try and do with this coil wiring. So that's probably all I'm gonna do on camera today. 
Uh, next episode, I'm gonna take all of this back out of the car because we know what length it all needs to be. And I'm gonna do it all up on the desk because um, it's just gonna be a bit easier and nicer to do. So that'll be the next episode.